after studying this module you would be able to learn about the key concepts of the behavioral paradigm understand the counseling process of the behavioral approach examine the counseling techniques and procedures involved and evaluate the limitations and criticisms of behavioral counseling Behavior therapy initiated during the 1950s and 1960s presented a powerful challenge to the principles of psychoanalysis. Behavior counseling focuses on observable behaviors rather than on the unconscious, on the present rather than the past, and on short-term treatment, clear goals and rapid change had considerable appeal. During the past 50 years, Behavior counseling and therapy has continued to evolve and currently plays an important role in psychology and counseling, providing a variety of helpful strategies of use in a broad range of settings and with a diverse clientele. As its name implies, behavior counseling focuses entirely on specific behaviors with the goal of changing or modifying that behavior. Health-related behaviors such as smoking, obesity, and a sedentary lifestyle have recently become the focus of increased interest because these unhealthy behaviors have been linked to illness and preventable deaths. Similarly, childhood behaviors such as bedwetting, tardiness, or poor sleep habits can become the focus of practitioners' attention. Adult behaviors such as speeding, drinking, phobias, etc. can be modified as well. In fact, almost any human behavior can be the subject of behavior counseling. Behavior therapy has been referred to as the first wave of behavior counseling, with cognitive behavioral counseling being the second wave. The third wave in behavior counseling refers to the introduction of mindfulness and acceptance and commitment into the cognitive behavioral tradition. By the 1980s, behavior counseling had established its place in psychotherapy and its effectiveness was well established by research. However, many practitioners were dissatisfied with traditional behavior counseling, which de-emphasized the counseling or therapeutic alliance, viewed the counselor as the authority and sometimes seemed dehumanizing. As a result, the shape of behavior counseling has evolved during the past 30 years. A positive and collaborative treatment alliance is now an essential element of treatment. The move to integrate behavior counseling and the cognitive paradigm reflected in the work of Mitchenbaum, Lazarus, Ellis, Beck and others has broadened application of this approach and made it less mechanical and more sensitive to individual needs. The incorporation of mindfulness and other concepts from transpersonal psychology has provided an entirely new focus for behavior counseling and therapy. The importance of actions in counseling. Focusing on behavior change has many advantages in treatment most of which are similar to the advantages of focusing on cognitions. However, an emphasis on action has additional advantages as well as some drawbacks. The advantage of focusing on action. Most counselors recognize that emotions, thoughts and actions have reciprocal relationship. Whether or not counselors focus primarily on behaviors, they should be aware of the potential benefits of paying attention to the client's action. Behaviors as presenting problems. Clients presenting problems often focus on behaviors. People rarely seek treatment because of dysfunctional thoughts, although they do sometimes seek help for negative emotions such as depression or anxiety. Usually, however, what impels them to seek help is an upsetting behavior either their own or someone else's. Common behavioral concerns include overeating, unhealthy use of drugs or alcohol, poor impulse control, difficulty in finding a rewarding job, and problems in developing rewarding relationships. 
because behaviors often prompt treatment people are more likely to feel heard and to believe that treatment will be helpful if at least initially it addresses those concerns attending to unrewarding or self-destructive behavior is particularly important in treatment of people who are not self-referred for help for example people who are fulfilling court mandated treatment requirements who have been encouraged to meet with an employee assistance counselor at work or who have brought to for help by a concerned parent or dissatisfied partner usually are in treatment because their behaviors have violated the law or been unsatisfactory or troubling to others the accessibility of behaviors behaviors usually are more accessible than either thoughts or emotions think back to yesterday at the same time you may have difficulty recalling your thoughts and feelings but you can probably remember where you were and what you were doing you may have been listening to a lecture driving home from work or taking a nap because behaviors are linked to the structure of our days we can usually remember them whereas thoughts and emotions are more difficult to recall comfort and discussion of behaviors discussion of people's behaviors is likely to be less threatening than discussion of their early childhood experiences or their troubling emotion and somewhat less uncomfortable than discussion of their cognitions people are used to talking about their activities with others but are less likely to talk with others about thoughts and emotions accuracy of information discussion of actions is socially acceptable even among casual acquaintances and people seem more able to present accurate information about their behaviors than about their emotions and cognitions having clear and valid information especially at the beginning of treatment is essential in formulating realistic goals and a viable treatment plan as well as in developing a positive therapeutic alliance of course keep in mind that some people will deliberately present inaccurate information about their behaviors especially those that are socially and legally unacceptable such as excessive use of drugs or aggressive expressions of anger ease of measurement actions are amenable to measurements people can determine the baseline frequency of a behavior and then assess change in such variables as how many beers they drink each day how often they exercise how many hours they devote to work and how much time they spend with friends because even small changes can readily be identified people trying to modify their actions often have rapid evidence of improvement this can be empowering and promote motivation optimism and further change at the same time if an incorrect diagnosis case formulation or treatment plan has been made that probably will be reflected in a lack of behavior change in response to treatment this alerts the counselor to the need for a revised and more effective treatment approach the availability of behavior change strategies a broad range of behavior change strategies has been developed this enables counselor to individualize treatment plans bring creativity to their work and maximize the likelihood of success by tailoring treatment to a particular person and behavior extensive research support because the impact of behavior change strategies usually is easy to assess and because most behaviorally oriented counselors are favorably disposed towards empirical research an extensive body of literature describes and affirms the effectiveness of behavior counseling this treatment approach has received more support than other approaches not necessarily because behavior counseling is superior but because of the extensive research conducted on this approach in 1995 a task force of the division of clinical psychology of the american psychological association conducted a thorough review 
of the literature to identify treatment approaches that had been empirically supported. They identified 22 well-established treatments and seven treatments that were probably effective. As a group, these treatments were viewed as appropriate for use with 21 different mental disorders listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Nearly all of these were behavioral or cognitive behavioral in nature. Another eight well-established treatments and 19 probably effective treatments were added to the list in 1996. 12 of these were behavioral or cognitive behavioral in nature. Clearly behavior therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy have proven their value in treating a broad range of disorders and symptoms. The limitations of focusing on actions. Although treatment systems that focus on behavior change have many advantages, they also have some shortcomings. An exclusive focus on actions can lead counselors and clients to ignore thoughts and feelings that need attention and are important in solidifying change. This can lead to superficial treatment and limited results. Several safeguards can reduce the possibility that counselors focusing on action will miss important underlying concerns. First, they should conduct a comprehensive assessment of their clients via a thorough intake interview and appropriate inventories. This helps provide a full picture of clients and facilitates development of a treatment plan that is broad enough to address both presenting problems and relevant underlying concerns. Second, counselors should closely monitor the progress of treatment. If rapid change is not evident, counselors may not have accurately conceptualized a case and may need additional information and a revised treatment plan. Third, behavior counseling should usually not be used alone. Combining behavior treatment strategies with cognitive approaches in particular enhance the power of behavior counseling and enables counselors successfully to address a broad range of concerns. Behavioral Strategies and Interventions Counselor can implement many different strategies to help clients begin to change their behavior. Some of the most useful interventions are listed here. First, acting as if. This strategy was first developed by Alfred Adler, whose ideas can be viewed as an early version of CBT. When confronting a challenging situation, people act as if they are someone whom they view as capable of handling the situation effectively. Children undergoing medical treatments, for example, have coped more successfully when they pretended to be their favorite superhero. Adults too can benefit from this empowering approach by acting as if they are an admired friend or colleague. Second, activity scheduling. Planning activities that are rewarding and provide a sense of accomplishment can help people in many ways. Having a schedule provides focus and direction, which can counteract inertia, confusion, and problems in decision making. It can limit excessive sleeping or television watching and prevent isolation. It increases optimism and reduces depression by helping people realize that they can enjoy their lives and have successes. 
activities designed to accomplish treatment goals are particularly valuable. For example, the person who is overwhelmed by a recent job loss can benefit from preparing a realistic schedule of activities to find out another job. The schedule should list these activities when they will be performed and how much time will be spent on each task. Exercise and other forms of physical activity also can be very helpful. Research has shown that physical exercise can reduce depression and increase secretion of endorphins that improve feeling of well-being. Third, aversion therapy. Rewards rather than punishments or negative consequences are usually favored in counseling because they enhance self-esteem, optimism, and relationships. However, sometimes linking undesirable behaviors with negative experiences motivates change. Readers should bear in mind that aversion therapy is a risky intervention. Care must be exercised in planning and implementing aversion therapy to be sure it does not have a negative emotional or physical impact and is respectful of people's rights and choices. Done poorly, aversion therapy can cause people to leave counseling prematurely, to feel exploited and traumatized and to develop even more severe symptoms. Antabuse and emetic used to discourage people from consuming alcohol is an example of aversion therapy. Time outs used to modify children's behavior are another form of aversion therapy. Although their primary purpose is to give a child an opportunity to calm down and reflect. Visual imagery sometimes entails aversion therapy. For example, a woman who wants to stop smoking might imagine herself having severe difficulty breathing or coping with smoking related diseases. A young man who is contemplating suicide so that his girlfriend will feel guilty about ending their relationship may change his mind after imagining himself lying in his grave while she goes on to have a full rewarding life. Satiation, giving people excessive exposure to a negative stimulus or behavior, is a type of aversion therapy. For example, the woman who wants to stop smoking might smoke a large number of cigarettes in rapid succession until she feels ill. Behavioral rehearsal. This strategy gives people an opportunity to practice a challenging task. The rehearsal might involve a role play with the counselor or a practice session with a friend. Tape recording the rehearsal or observing oneself in the mirror while practicing the desired behavior offer opportunities for feedback and improvement. Behavioral rehearsal can be used for a wide variety of experience. Making or refusing requests and sharing positive and negative feelings with others lend themselves particularly well to behavioral rehearsal. Behavioral rehearsal also can help people improve their social skills, for example, by practicing ways to initiate and maintain conversations or invite other people to join them in social activities. Biofeedback Biofeedback involves the use of instruments that monitor bodily functions such as heart rate, sweat gland activity, skin temperature and pulse rate and give people feedback on those functions via a tone or light. Biofeedback can promote reductions in tension and anxiety and increased relaxation. It also can have physical and medical benefits such as lowering blood pressure and improving pain control. Contracting. Establishing a clear agreement between client and counselor 
about the goals of treatment and the roles of both participants is an important component of CBT and behavioral counseling. Contracting is usually done early in the treatment process. However, each time a new problem area is targeted for change, client and counselor can expand their contract to include additional objectives and procedures. This provides direction and motivation and can increase client cooperation with the treatment process. Diaphragmatic breathing, taking slow, deep breaths and focusing on breathing can be calming, even induce sleep. This sort of breathing supplies the body with more oxygen, focuses concentration and increases self-control and mindfulness. Abdominal or diaphragmatic breathing is particularly helpful. People breathe in through the nose, expanding the diaphragm and then expel the air through the mouth. Expressive and creative activities. Although art therapy, dance therapy and music therapy are professions in their own right. Counselors with other areas of specializations sometimes incorporate these and other forms of creative self-expression into their work. This can enable people to become more aware of and give form to their emotions. Expressive techniques can be particularly successful with people who have difficulty verbalizing their feelings and concerns or who may feel stuck or blocked. These approaches can be freeing and empowering and are useful with both adults and children. Of course, they should be used cautiously by counselors who do not have specialized training in therapeutic use of the arts. Extension. Extension involves withdrawing the payoff of an undesirable behavior in hopes of reducing or eliminating it. For example, parents who give their children extra attention whenever they misbehave may be inadvertently reinforcing the indesirable behavior. Coaching the parents to pay attention to positive and ignore misbehavior as much as possibly is likely to reduce negative behavior. Flooding. Flooding, like aversion therapy, is a high risk intervention that must be used with caution and only by counselors who are well versed in the appropriate use of this strategy. In flooding, people are exposed to high dose of the feared stimulus in the expectation that this will desensitize them to the feared stimulus. An example is putting a person with a fear of balloons in a room full of balloons. The person must remain in the feared situation long enough for the fear to peak and then diminish. If the person leaves the situation prematurely, the fear may worsen and the person may learn to fear those who staged the flooding. In addition, the fear may lead the person to act in unsafe ways, modeling. By observing models and identifying the ingredients that make their behaviors successful, people can expand their repertoire of positive behavior. People are most likely to be influenced by models who are similar to them in terms of gender, age, race and beliefs. Perceived as attractive and admirable in realistic ways and viewed as competent and warm. Clients can observe others engaged in behaviors or activities that they would like to emulate, such as public speaking, conversing at social gatherings, or offering suggestions at a meeting. Counselors can serve as models demonstrating target behaviors. Clients also can serve as their own models by making audio or video recordings of themselves engaged in positive and desired behaviors. Reasonable consequences. Reasonable consequences are the logical and usually unpleasant outcomes of undesirable behavior. For example, the child who does not pick up her toys before dinner is required to clean her room 
after dinner instead of watching her favorite television program. Getting fired for repeatedly coming to work late is another example of such a consequence. Although reasonable consequences can be viewed as punishment, they are preferable to arbitrary and contrived punishments because they have a logical connection to the undesirable behavior and give people a strong message about the implications of their behavior. Reinforcements Reinforcements and rewards encourage behavior change, enhance learning and solidify gains. Reinforcements should be carefully selected and planned. They should be meaningful and worthwhile to the person so that they are motivating and should be realistic and reasonable. For example, giving a child a video game for cleaning his room once is not realistic. But setting aside rupees 50 towards the purchase of a video game each week, the child cleans his room 5 out of 7 days probably is. Adults can create their own reinforcement plans. One woman who had difficulty paying bills on time set aside one hour twice a week for organizing her finances. Each time she completed the hour of financial planning, she rewarded herself by going to the bookstore to buy a new mystery and spending the rest of the evening reading her books. Rewards need not be material. Social reinforcements such as parental approval, a positive rating at work and admiration from friends can be at least as powerful. In addition, Clients can reward themselves through positive affirmations and reminders of their success such as the declining balance on their credit bill and their improved grades. Reinforcements usually are most powerful if they are provided shortly after the success and are clearly linked to the accomplishment. Such reinforcers are particularly likely to solidify the desired change in behavior and contribute to either further change or maintenance of goal achievement. Relaxation Relaxation is often combined with other techniques such as systematic desensitization, abdominal breathing, hypnosis, and visual imagery. Teaching relaxation strategies in a treatment session and encouraging practice between sessions can facilitate people's effort to reduce stress and anxiety and make behavioral changes. Several well-established relaxation strategies are available, including progressive muscle relaxation, sequentially tensing and relaxing each muscle group in the body, a body scan, each part of the body is systematically assessed and relaxed. And simple exercises such as head rolls, shoulder shrugs and shaking one's body until it feels loose and relaxed. Shaping This technique is used to effect a gradual change in behavior. People make successive approximations of the desired behaviors, eventually leading to a new pattern of behavior. For example, the following steps might help people with social anxiety to improve their interactions with others. Spend 5 to 10 minutes at a social gathering. Do not initiate any conversation. Spend 5 to 10 minutes at a social gathering and greet at least two people. Spend 15 to 20 minutes at a social gathering, greet at least two people. Introduce yourself to at least one person and ask a question of one other person. Follow the previous step and, in addition, have a brief conversation about the weather and compliment the host on the food. Token economies Particularly useful in group settings such as schools, day treatment programs, hospitals, prisons and even families. Token economies are an effective and efficient way to change a broad range of behaviors in a group of people. 
behavioral rules or guidelines first must be established and then understood and learned by all participants. These guidelines are generally written out and posted to maintain awareness. Then, a system of rapidly identifying and recording each person's performance of the desired behaviors is developed. Staff members in a group home, for example, might place stars or marks on chart or distribute a poker chip as soon as possible after a desired behavior is emitted. Finally, a system of rewards is developed. The rewards should be clear, realistic and meaningful to the participants and be given in ways that are fair and consistent. In a typical token economy, the stars, points or poker chips are used like trading stamps to earn privileges. For example, two points might be exchanged for television time or a telephone call. Five points might merit a trip to the movie and 15 points might be exchanged for a new CD. Opportunities should be provided for frequent redemption of rewards to provide reinforcement. In addition, social reinforcement, trace, appropriate physical affection, should be paired with the material rewards to develop intrinsic motivation and internalization of the desired behaviors. Generalization of the behaviors outside the therapeutic settings promotes their establishment. Skill training. An important component of promoting positive change is teaching people the skills they need to affect that change. Counselors can teach clients both general skills, for example, assertiveness training, decision making, problem solving, communication skills, and those serving the needs of a particular person, for example, interviewing, anger management. Parents often benefit from learning to use behavior change strategies with their children. Bibliotherapy or relevant readings can supplement counselors' effort to teach new skills. Many books are available, for example, on assertiveness, time management, parenting, and other positive behaviors. Assertion training can be particularly helpful for the following people. Those who cannot express anger or irritation. Those who are overly polite and who allow others to take advantage of them. Those who have difficulty saying no. Those who find it difficult to express affection and other positive responses. Those who feel they do not have a right to have their own feelings or thoughts. Assertiveness training is ordinarily practiced in a group setting. Lange and Jakubowski point out that it usually involves five steps. To eliminate exaggerated fears and irrational beliefs, for example, the fear that we may hurt another's feeling which arises from the mistaken beliefs that the feelings of others are important and one's own feelings are only secondary. Another fear is that if we are assertive, others will fail to love us, which is seen as being catastrophic rather than simply unfortunate or undesirable. A third fear is that others will see our assertiveness as a lack of politeness, regardless of how rude or insensitive the other person may be. A fourth fear is that by being assertive, we may expose ourselves as being inadequate. Based on the irrational beliefs that anything less than perfection is unacceptable. Such a fear often immobilizes us when we feel the need to act assertively. Accepting one's own personal rights, individuals must accept the idea that everyone is entitled to act assertively and to express honest thoughts, feelings and beliefs. Practicing assertive behavior alone, this usually involves either using a mirror or mental role playing 
those situations where you would like to be more assertive, focusing on non-verbal behaviors that are important in assertion. Role-playing difficult situations with another's will provide the opportunity for role rehearsal and feedback from the group members. Further, rehearsal then permits the client to gradually display more assertion, applying the feedback and thus permitting a type of shaping to occur. Multiple rehearsals also make the individual increasingly comfortable and at ease while being assertive. Being assertive in real situations, individual may contract to carry out assertive behavior that they previously avoided. In the next session, they describe their experiences, evaluate their attempts, engage in further rehearsal, and make more contract for out-of-group assertion experience. Systematic desensitization. Systematic desensitization a powerful behavior change strategy is useful in reducing fears, phobias, obsessions, and compulsions, and anxiety. Systematic desensitization can be conducted in the imagination, imaginal desensitization, or in context, that is, in vivo desensitization. Now let us summarize this module. Behavior counseling evolved during the 20th century from the research of Ivan Pavlov, B.F. Skinner, John W. Watson, Joseph Wolfe, Dollard and Miller, and Albert Bandura. This counseling approach takes the stance that behavior is learned and consequently can be unlearned. Behavior counselors are concerned about results, so they take the time to establish a baseline develop interventions that facilitate behavioral change, use reinforcements to satisfy gains, carefully plan implementation and monitor progress.